In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we're celebrating Thursday of the fourth week of Easter. And as we prepare ourselves for this liturgy, let us ask for God's healing in our lives. Lord Jesus, he healed the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness, and in those you have chosen to make new, through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. The synagogue officials sent word to them, My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the way people exalted people during the sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 40 years he put them, put up with them in the desert. When they had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, my son of Jesse, Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may always be with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When John had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen, 
but so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospels clearly make a case that Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed and who his betrayer was. And perhaps it does this for theological reasons. First off, it declares or in illustrates that Jesus, that the Son of God, is clairvoyant, he, that he knows the future, that this, he's aware of this master plan that is laid out that can't be deviated from. On the other hand, it makes a case that Jesus knew his, who his betrayer was and had the opportunity to escape if that was part of the plan. So Jesus isn't victimized in all of this, that somehow he is just fulfilling a larger plan. But I think there's something more to be learned from this. So if Jesus knows who his betrayer is, we need to pay attention to how Jesus treats that betrayer. He doesn't out him. He doesn't single him out necessarily. And even though he says some rough words about it'd be better for him if he has never been born, when it comes to dealing with Judas, there's still the same level of compassion and acceptance as he does the other apostles. So when Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me, uh, they all start to ask questions. And their denial of that it's them kind of betrays the fact that probably deep down inside they're wondering if Jesus can't read their minds. Because I'm sure for each of the disciples, there was something about Jesus that they didn't quite totally swallow or accept. Even if they believed him to be the Messiah, what he was planning to do and what he was doing as the Messiah wasn't necessarily adding up in their heads. So to some degree, all of them were betraying Jesus. Not to the extent that Judas did, but I would imagine all of them were a bit nervous when Jesus makes this claim. And then when it comes to Judas specifically, and according to this gospel passage, presumably Jesus washes his feet as long as he does, as well as he does the other 11 apostles. In the other accounts where it says that Jesus, uh, Jesus dismisses Judas to go do his traitorous deed, he does so after at least having some of the Passover meal. And it is in the breaking of the bread, Jesus says, the one who dips his hand in the dish with me is the one who betrays me. In one account, it is Jesus handing him the morsel of food that indicates who the betrayer is. In this gospel passage, Jesus simply says, and is quoting the Psalms to say, the one who's eaten my bread is the one who's raised the heel against me. And that's not to imply that the Psalm was prophesizing that Jesus was going to be betrayed by somebody. I think the Psalm was simply addressing the fact that we encounter betrayal in our relationships all the time, even those who are close to us. And the reason why it's able to say that is because betrayal happens at a variety of levels. It's always inherently there because who we want and who we expect to have in a relationship are not the real person. And so relationships are about acceptance of that discontinuity between what we want and who we, the other person is. And so this is evident when we're doing marriage prep. There's a survey that we give to young couples that are taking a test to see how well they're communicating in all the different aspects regarding marriage. And there's a bunch of statements and they either disagree or disagree with the statement as individuals. Well, in the survey, there's a trick question it's a hypothetical but absolute statement. It says, under no circumstances could I ever remain married to my spouse if he or she were ever unfaithful to me. It's a trick question. And it's amazing the number of couples that will say, that's right, I couldn't remain 
uh, married if my spouse were ever to cheat on me. But it's an absolute statement, and it really kind of begs the question, because the, the correct answer is not sure of that. In, there may be circumstances in, under which I would remain married. Whatever happened to the good old thing called forgiveness? And is it a case that we're always going to be on the same page about what an infidelity is? If you automatically assume the worst case scenario, then there's a whole bunch of other cases that still constitute an infidelity at some level, at some kind. And if you understand that that's an infidelity, is that unforgivable as well? And so I think that the psalmist, when it says, the one who's eaten my food has raised his heel against me, is simply addressing the reality of our lives. Jesus gives us an example. Here he is betrayed. His life is sold out from under him for 30 gold coins, supposedly. And he treats that individual knowing that that's going to take place with the same compassion or the same hospitality and acceptance as he does the other apostles who betray them in their own particular ways. So Jesus demonstrates that the grace of God, the love that's inherent and required of relationships, is a thing that allows us to, ex to deal with and to bridge the differences, the flaws, the imperfections of one another, of ourselves and the people that we have relationships with. So Jesus treats Judas with amazing compassion, knowing what he's going to do. The problem is Judas was not able to accept that compassion and ended his life because he couldn't deal with the mercy. So if we're going to accept the mercy of God, we, like him, have to accept that our lives are going to be full of tensions, even in the relationships that are closest to us. It is in forgiving that we, too, become divine. Trusting that God is the author of all our stories, we place our needs and petitions into his loving hands. For the people of God, may we be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in our faith and witness to the gospel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in positions of earthly power, may the Lord grant them charity and prudence in their efforts to bend the arc of history toward justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with difficult decisions and the burdens of circumstances, may God give them grace and strength to endure and overcome, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are gathered here, may Christ in the Eucharist continue to transform us for his work in the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rejoice in the presence of God for all eternity, especially for Kathy Heresy, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you continue to draw us more deeply into your love, and so we offer these prayers and ask that you answer them according to our need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and the good of his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all the stress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of the saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.